What's up guys? Welcome to the channel. This is Sonora Design and today is going to be the best day ever because we're going to start talking crossovers. So, today we're finally gonna start talking crossovers. You want it, you got it. Today we're gonna start from the beginning. I'm starting a series of crossover videos uh, and I'm gonna try and go as far as I can with my knowledge. But guess what? I have partners for this uh, adventure, okay? So we can like go even further away. So guys, today is gonna be video number one. And on video number one, I'm gonna talk about frequency response, frequency response graph, our hearing uh, instruments. What can we hear? I mean, the basics, okay? So you guys understand what is a crossover? What does it do? I know most of you guys already know that. So you guys can skip the video, go to the end, or just like and subscribe and keep watching to support the channel. I'm gonna change the setup because you guys know I am old school. So I'm gonna find a board and I'm gonna improvise something to show you guys uh, graphs and writings and pictures and I'm gonna sketch up. Let's move on. I'm gonna change the setup and I'll be back. All right, guys, so I'm here and that's the best I could make for now. I think I should start from the beginning. And in the beginning, we are here because of music and we like our systems to reproduce music with high fidelity. How do we hear music? How we perceive audio and music in general? We humans are capable of hearing frequencies from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz, kind of. Our representation is going to be from 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. Most humans can hear from 30 to 15, 16 kilohertz or even less. With age, we shrink that spectrum. So we need, a, we need to visualize that because we are going to start working with frequencies. So to understand crossovers later, we should understand what we can hear. So I think it would be good to show a frequency response graph so you guys know what I'm talking about. I mean, I know most of you guys already know a frequency response graph and most of you have seen that before, but I'm gonna draw it down here anyway so we can talk about like music instruments and how we perceive uh, music in general, okay? So let me get a marker. All right. We're going to talk about frequency response. And in the beginning, we're going to have a graph that looks kind of like this. This is going to be our SPL, which is our sound pressure level measured in decibels. So we have DB here. Uh, 70, 60, 50, and we are going to have a graduation that goes from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz. That's the same as cycles per second. That's going to uh, show uh, the length of our sound wave. So we can say that uh, at 20 Hertz, our sound waves are really long. Okay, so that's kind of like a representation of a long wave. And at 20 kilohertz, our, our waves are like pretty short. So that's the difference of like high and low frequencies. And we can hear from, let's say, 20 Hertz to 20, 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz. So we are in this spectrum here. This is a graph of frequency by sound pressure level. And everything that we can hear is gonna be inside this spectrum here. So we have like uh, instruments performing in this spectrum of frequencies. 
This graph is the basic to understand later on, to understand crossovers, okay? We're gonna work with that to calculate our crossovers. So we have our cycles per second, which is represented by sound waves, short waves for high frequencies, high frequencies and low frequencies, okay? So the length of the sound wave is different. Low frequency instruments, bass, bass guitar, an electric bass, uh, bottom note would be at around 40 hertz, it's low frequency. If this bass has like six strings, then it goes even lower to like at around 30 hertz. A uh, low key of an organ with like a huge pipe can go as low as 30 hertz as well. Uh, a kick drum and a drum set can be tuned to at around 50, 70, 80 hertz. Low key on a grand piano. So the lower key on a grand piano can go as low as 27 hertz. Higher frequency instruments. Mm, it can be like flute, uh, higher notes in a violin. Uh, we can have like um, higher keys in the piano. Piano gets a wide, a wide uh, spectrum of frequencies. It goes all the way from 27 hertz to 42 kilohertz. Um, cymbals in a drum set, okay? Hi-hats and splashes and crashes. And so that's all high frequency instruments. All right, so now that we can hear this whole spectrum and all kinds of different instruments, we gotta talk about Octaves, okay? You guys might hear that. And what's an octave? Octave, uh, as the name says, it's uh, the eighth tone in a note scale. If you have a scale for A, B, C, D, E, F, G, that's seven notes and an eighth would be uh, the same A, same tone in a different frequency. The eighth tone in this scale is the same note as the first one. So there'll be another A in a different frequency. I don't have a piano to show you that here, but I have a guitar. We can try and get like same tones with different frequencies in different octaves. So if I have an octave, if you have like a, a, a frequency, a tone, a note that vibrates at 20 hertz, the next octave would be 40 hertz and the next would be 80 hertz. And from 80 hertz, it's gonna be 160 hertz. And then it goes at infinitum. All right, guys, so I'm gonna try and show the octaves and frequencies here in the guitar. So you guys have an idea what frequency those things play. As I said, I don't have a grand piano here, which would be like a good representation of frequencies and notes and octaves, but we have a guitar. So let's try and record the screen. It is recording. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna show you something. I'm gonna show you that we have. That's the lowest uh, note on the guitar. It's a E. It plays at 82 hertz. And if we go to the next one, which is an octave after, we can count like uh, seven notes from E. We get to this E here. Guess what? This E plays at 160, at around 160 hertz. So we had the other one at 82. This is 164. This is an octave, okay? Do you guys understand? E. This is E. Let's move to A. A. Playing at 1097. Let's say 120, 110 hertz. That's uh, A. If we keep moving on, seven notes after we have. Yay! We have another A. This second A plays at. 220 hertz at around. It might not be that well tuned, my guitar, but that doesn't matter. What matters is, is that next octave is double the frequency. So if we have an A playing at 110 hertz, we have the next one playing at 220 hertz, and we have the next one playing at 440 hertz, okay? 
and it goes all the way to the end. We can pick like random notes here, like C at 1.30, then we have C at 260. Wow, that's magic. It just doubles. <laughs> okay. I think we got it, guys. Let's move on because um, we still have a lot. So now that you guys know what we can hear, we have to move on and talk about why do we need a crossover? Why can't we just have a speaker driver that plays all this spectrum of frequencies and be happy with it forever? Wow, we can. There are full range speakers in the market. But guess what? It's hard for one speaker driver to reproduce uh, this whole spectrum with uh, high efficiency in all frequencies. Why? Because remember, lower frequencies, we have like a long cycle. Higher frequencies, we have like short cycles. So the speaker has to play slow and quick at the same time. It's really tough. So what do we do for that? We divide this frequency in half. We cut this graph in half, basically. And we use one speaker driver for the low frequencies and one speaker driver for higher frequencies. That's when we need a crossover. Why? Because we don't want this speaker driver to play low frequencies and we don't want this speaker driver to play high frequencies. It's a frequency divider. So the thing is, we need maybe like two drivers to play that well. So we can add a woofer here that plays from 20 hertz until like 2000 hertz or 2 kilohertz. Let's say we want to get a woofer to play lower frequencies and a tweeter to play higher frequencies. We have a woofer that plays all the way from 20 hertz and down. And we have a tweeter that plays all the way up and it cuts down to 20 kilohertz, okay? So you guys have seen this graph already. We have uh, the woofer, okay? Which is our like a larger driver playing lower frequencies. And we have the tweeter, which is our like tiny driver playing higher frequencies. What's the difference? Lower frequencies, they need more power, they move more air, so the drivers are wider, we need more volume inside of the box. For the tweeters, they are smaller, they are quick, the frequencies, the frequency response, the cycles, the cycles are super quick and tiny. Lower frequencies, the cycles are longer. So that's what we need. Move for here and a tweeter. As soon as you're gonna have like two drivers play in the same speaker uh, and they don't play well all kinds of frequencies, a full range driver would kind of play all frequencies. But if you have a woofer, a woofer is not gonna play, it's not gonna perform well in this region here, okay? So as the same as a tweeter, the smaller driver, will not perform well in this region here. Probably gonna melt, blow, pop, okay? It doesn't work. So the thing is, how do we filter those frequencies? We don't want lower frequencies to go to the tweeter. We don't want high frequencies to go to the woofer. So we need a crossover, a frequency divider, a frequency separator. It's called crossover because I think it crosses over or something. All right, guys, so we need two drivers to play this whole spectrum of frequency and we need to separate those frequencies. Uh, we need to send bass to the woofer and we need to send high frequencies, high treble. Now we get to electronics because we have a signal path coming from the amplifier that carries 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz information on that recording, whatever. And it's like an electric signal and we have to separate uh, those frequency. What do we use? We use components. We use like electronic components. We use capacitors, we use coils, inductors, and we use resistors. Those things, they act in, 
a strange way. And we're gonna go and find out what do they do. We're gonna have an amplifier here. And we have the positive and the negative output. I'm gonna plug it to a tweeter with a positive and negative. Then I'm gonna plug it to a woofer. Okay, let's separate that. A positive to the positive of the woofer. Let's say this is all connected to the ground. Okay, this goes to the ground and the negative goes to the ground. Meaning they're all connected. Okay, because I don't want to ruin my drawing. So we have the negative to the ground, ground, ground. It doesn't mean you're going to ground it all up, but it means it's all connected to the negative pole of your amplifier. So we need to add something here on the tweeter. We need to break this thing here, and we need to break this thing here, and we need to add components. So we won't have low frequencies going to the tweeter, and we won't have high frequencies going to the woofer. We add, we add a capacitor here, and we add a coil here, coil or inductor, coil and a capacitor. What do a capacitor do? It cuts the lower frequencies. What do a coil or an inductor do? It cuts the higher frequencies, okay? So that's the beginning of our crossover. So we got a better, uh, better response from our drivers because they play better specific frequencies. Smaller driver plays high frequencies better. Larger driver plays low frequencies better. All right, guys, so we are at the end of video number one. And on video number one, we talked about our hearing, about music, musical instruments, and why do we need a crossover? What does a crossover do? I guess that's all. I know, that's the basic. And if you're curious about it, if you're curious about music and how do we hear, I'm gonna post uh, links on the description down below. So you can follow up, you can do your own research and get familiar with all of that. I know it was quick because it's supposed to be quick because we're gonna get to crossovers on next video. We're gonna talk about crossover components, crossover orders, slopes, and I mean other things. Pretty soon we're gonna go to the computer software and start modeling our own crossovers. So stay tuned, my friends. I hope you guys had fun and enjoyed the video and I hope to see you guys soon.